Hi everyone. So today's topic is linear relations. We have already touched on this topic a few different times. I'm going to focus on uh, graphing from a table of values. It's really important for you, for everyone in the class to know how to graph really well because it's going to be a major component of a grade 10. Um, and you will be graphing from table, table of values quite a bit next year. So let's make sure that you are really comfortable with that topic. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to graph the, the equation y equals 2x. And you already know how to graph this using the slope and y-intercept. All right, so if you remember the form y equals mx plus b, the, the m in this case would be the 2, which is the slope, and then there's no number being added, which means the y-intercept is going to be 0. For this question here, we're not going to use that form to graph. We're going to actually use a table of values. So in order to be able to graph with a table of values, we need, um, we need to select x values. And typically, these are the values that we would select. We would select 2, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. These are pretty standard. You can choose other values, um, but this is typically what is used. So for this question, these are the values that I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, in each line, replace my x value in the, in the expression. So for the first one, we have y equals 2 times x, and the x is going to be 2 in this case, which is 4. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4, which means the answer for y is 4. And that gives us a coordinate. Right, gives us the coordinate of 2, 4. x is 2 and y we just worked out to be 4. So I can plot that on my graph over to the right 2 and up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. So there's my first point. And I want to go through systematically and do the same thing for the other values of x that I had selected. And that, that's going to create a graph for us. Okay, so the next one would be 2 multiplied by 1 is equal to y which is 2, so there's my second point, and so on. So I'm just going to reveal the rest and plot those points. So the next one we have is 0, 0, negative 1, uh, negative 2, and then negative 2, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. So there's enough points here to be able to graph this line. So now what I could do is I could add the, the line to that. Okay. And then don't forget to put arrows on both sides. So I'll just change the ending for that. There we go. Okay. So that is how you would graph from a table of values. What type of correlation is this? Well, you can see that it is linear, right? It's going to be straight. It's a straight line. So it's linear. What is the coordinate where the graph crosses the y-axis? So that's this location right here, right? That's our y-axis. It's going to be at the origin in this case, uh, which is 0, 0. Second question. Okay, so this one. This one has a fraction, so I wanted to do one that, that wasn't a straightforward, um, but we are still replacing our x with the values that we had selected. In this case, I didn't choose 2, 1, 0, um, negative 1, negative 2. I chose these values here. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you choose for your x values. I chose these ones specifically because I want to make sure that my y coordinates come out to be nice whole numbers because I'm going to be graphing these. And I noticed that this is a fraction that's being divided by 2. So I know that if I multiply a fraction by um, an even number, uh, then I should be able to eliminate this fraction here. Um, you would find that uh, if, if you didn't see um, that ahead of time, it's not a problem. Like if I subbed in 1 here, it would be 3 over 2 times 1, which is 3 over 2. And when you subtract 2 from that, remember 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. Subtract 2 is going to give me negative a half. So I'm getting a negative answer or I'm getting um, a fraction here, which, um, which makes it a little bit trickier to graph. So then I would try the next number, right? I would try 2 and then you'll see that we're going to get a nice whole number. 
So for the first one, um, if you sub in 4, what you're trying to work out is what is 3 divided by 2 multiplied by 4? That is what that says. And I did it on the next slide here just to kind of show you um, step by step what has to happen. So we're multiplying 3 over 2 times 4. So multiplying fractions, um, you just a little refresher, you multiply the top numbers and then multiply the bottom numbers. The 4 has a 1 below it. Right, this is divided by 1. So you're multiplying the 3 by 4 to give you 12, and then 2 times 1, which gives you 2. Okay, so that's 12 over 2. 12 over 2 is 6. Um, so now I'm subtracting 2 from 6, which gives me 4. So if I replace the x with 4, you end up with 4 for your y coordinate. Okay, so that's my first point. So I can put that onto my graph. If you printed um, the, um, the lesson ahead of time, you can just fill in the notes as you're listening to my video, or um, you could just write the questions down so that you've got examples in your notes. I'm going to save the slideshow at the end so that you can refer to it uh, if you decided not to copy the notes out. But you should have some sort of notes to refer to when you are working on your homework. Um, so for the next one, I'm replacing the x with a 2. So 3 over 2 times 2 subtract 1 ends up being positive 1 and so on okay so I'm just going to reveal what I have here I'm not going to go through every single one they're worked out there for you all right so let's put the rest of these points on here 2 1 0 negative 2 is here negative 2 negative 5 over to the left 2 and down 5 and negative 4 negative 8 one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, so there is the graph of y equals 3 over 2x subtract 2. Um, the slope is 3 over 2, which you can check between two points. Right? How do you get from one point to the next? You're going to go up 3 and over to the right 2, and that pattern continues. And the y intercept is negative 2, which it is on our graph. So two different ways of graphing, right? You already know how to graph using slope and y-intercept form. Now you also know how to graph using a table of values. They are both very important for next year. Um, and then just add a line through it to show your graph because we are doing more than just plotting points, right? We're actually graphing this, this equation, okay, or relation. There we go. Make this a little bit nice and straight. Okay, um, what type of correlation is this? This is going to be linear again. It's a nice straight line. What is the coordinate where the graph crosses the y-axis? So in this case, it happens uh, down here at um, 0, negative 2. That is the y-intercept. All right, so looking at these two graphs on the side here, um, we want to talk about how are they alike and how are they different. So how are they alike? Well, they're, they're both straight lines, and they're going up to the right, so they have a positive slope. Okay, so straight lines, and they're going up to the right. And how are they different? Well, they are... Um, this one crosses at the origin, right? This one crosses at the y on the y-axis at zero. Um, the brown one crosses the y-axis at negative two, so they have different y-intercepts. And also, they have different slopes, right? You can see the green line is steeper than the brown line. So this has a higher slope than the brown line. And you can check by looking at the equations. This one has a slope of two, and this one down here has a slope of 3 over 2 or 1 and a half, which is less than 2. Okay, this is a recap. We've done this already. Um, direct variation means when your two lines are crossing at the origin, which they are here, and if they don't cross at the origin, that's called the um, partial variation. Okay, um, the red line crosses the y-axis at a, some positive value, like a positive 2, and the green one um, crosses the y-axis at like a negative 2. So neither of these lines um, are partial variation. The equation will be y equals mx because the b is the y-intercept, which is going to be 0 in this case. 
um, the equation for the partial variation line is going to have some kind of val value added or subtracted depending on what the y-intercept is. All right, so looking at this determined types of variation in this case, um, so for, there we go, that's the better slide. Um, the, for the y equals 2x, the variation um, is going to be partial. Oops, sorry, I'm going to say direct because it's going through 0, 0. And then the other one is going to be partial because it's not going through 0, 0. All right, and the last part of the lesson is just, you know, refreshing um, your knowledge with calculating first differences. All right, so at the top there it says, um, in earlier work we determined if a relation was linear or nonlinear by looking at the graph. Right, if the line is straight, we call it linear. If it's not straight, it's not linear. Um, now we're going to look, we're going to learn how to use a table of values to determine if it's going to be linear or nonlinear. So what we're going to do is figure out the first differences. So to find the first differences, um, you know, we'll, need, we'll need to figure out what the y values are first. So y equals 3x. Um, we're going to sub in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, I picked these randomly into this equation here just to have a bunch of points is because we want to look at the points and see if they are increasing or decreasing at a constant rate. That is our goal. So if you replace x with 0 in the expression, we have 3 times 0, which is 0. If you replace it with 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, and so on. So now we have all our y values, and let's analyze them. Let's see what's happening. Um, look at the pattern. It's 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. You can see they are increasing by 3. And the way you show your work is you write down the bottom number and subtract the one directly above it. So 12 minus 9 is 3. 9 minus 6 is 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. And 3 minus 0 is 3. Okay, so these are all... Um, the same, they're equal. Let's take a look at the x values. What's happening? Is there a constant increase or a decrease? Well, it looks like there is, right? They're increasing by 1. 4 minus 3 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, and so on. So both of those are, are equal, not to each other, but each line is the same. So because of that, we can say that uh, this is going to be linear for sure. Okay, x values are all equal to 1, y values are all equal to 3. So therefore, we can say that this is going to be linear. Okay, here's a couple more. So for the x values, you can see they're increasing by 1 consistently. And for the y values, and I've got delta x written at the top and delta y. Remember, delta means like difference, and we use a little triangle. So let's look at these values here. 16, 21, that's an increase of a 5. 21 to 26 is also 5. It looks like these are all going to be 5. Okay, so this is going to be linear for sure if we graphed. We don't have the equation here for this, but if we graph these points, if we plotted them, then uh, we would have a linear relation. Okay, let's look at question B. What's happening to the x's? Are they increasing or decreasing consistently? These are all going down by 3 evenly. Let's check the y's. We have to check both sides. The increase here, this looks like it's an increase by 2, and then increase by 4, and then another increase that's different. So these ones are not going to be the same. Therefore, if we plotted these um, five points, they would not be in a straight line. Okay, They'd be in a curve, so it would be nonlinear. And I think I've got two more. Last two examples. Let's see if these increase by the same amount. So these look like they're all going up by 5. And let's check these values here. These ones are decreasing. And it doesn't look like they're decreasing by the same amount because the difference here is 5, but the difference here is 10 and then 20. Okay, so that's not going to be um, linear. And the last one what's happening here. These are increasing by 7, and I think it's even. Yep, it's even all the way. And then these values here, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, these are decreasing by 1. So this is going to be linear. 
All right, so those are all the examples that I want to go through with you. Um, there is a little bit of homework. All right, this is the homework page that I'd like you to work on. There's some questions here. You're starting off with uh, just checking the first differences, check both sides, and then tell me if it's linear or nonlinear. Um, for these ones here, you have to plot the points. Uh, so if you could, um, if you've got some graph paper, use that. Um, you could also print off graph paper if you have a piece of, um, if you've got a printer at home. If you don't have those two options, what you could also do is go into Desmos and enter these into um, a table and then plot the points. And just take a little screenshot and then um, add that to your homework page and submit it that way if you don't have access to graph paper and so on. So work through the, these questions here. Make sure the answers are at the bottom again so you can you can check your work. Make sure that um, you read this little note here which says that you, you should be showing all of your steps. If there is no steps to be shown, um, then explain your answer, okay? Explain your thinking for me. All right, good luck and um, let me know if you need some help.